So, hello, Mark. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you. Excellent. So, let's dive into our subject of the day. I uh, would love to ask you a few questions about water filters, since I know that you, you know, you have a store, you are into water tech and filters and all that stuff. And I think many people are kind of think they know things, but also many people th- know some things. Other people, for example, don't know about sour filters, which might be important. I don't know. So is it something that people should pay attention to, in your opinion? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, if they are on the mains tap water to their home, then yeah, this water will be treated with disinfection chemicals like chlorine and chloramine and some other things maybe. Fluoride is added by some water companies on the direction of the Strategic Health Authority to add fluoride, not to treat the water, but for your teeth. That's the reason. So there's other chemicals added not to treat the water as well, but to treat the recipient of the water, which is less than 1% of all the water treated that way. So there are some chemicals that are undesirable in water. And, and when, you, when you bathe or shower, you do absorb water through your body. And, you, and, and through just the steam in the shower. I'm talking about mains water here, but there's also people, many people on a private water supply. For example, in England, uh, a lot of England is high in radon, which is radioactive. This is a problem when people have a shower, especially because the radon atomizes and you inhale the radon. And that's when you had a, a whole village in Cumbria, Riverfleck, which had, uh, everyone had lung cancer everyone oh yeah you have situations like this and this is not because of mains tap water this is because of underground water with radon inside so there's many different things that you can consider with the shower firstly that you inhale the chemicals in the water uh, you absorb them through the skin so a example in the bath uh, if i sat in the bath for 15 minutes i would maybe take a liter of water in my skin through my skin And that water is not the same kind of process like you drinking water. Your digestive system is, you know, 95% plus of the water I drink, I will urinate out. Okay. The water that I absorb through my skin or, you know, this kind of thing is completely different thing. It's going into my bloodstream. And that's why many, many health practitioners argue for shower and whole health systems more important than drinking water. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Before we continue, can I ask you about England? Specifically, you, you mentioned uh, radon or something. And also, first of all, how did that came to be, if you know? And another thing that you mentioned is that it atomizes. So how how it atomizes? What did you mean by that? I, I'm not too sure about all this kind of thing. For example, like um, in England and Ireland, where you see like the most ginger people, This is where there's the most radon. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah, they associate ginger people with radon. Uh, why is there radon there? I, I don't know. But it is something that air, it becomes like an aerosol. So if, I, if it was in the water, I drink it. It's not a problem. If, if I steam the water and shower, then it becomes aerosol. And that's when it's a problem, when you breathe that. So it's kind of like similar to mercury in a way. Like you can touch mercury, you can have it in your hands and, you know, uh, it's meant to be really toxic, but it's when it changes the state, it becomes like this damaging thing. So, so atomizing chemicals in the shower is really important. Like in hospitals, in the critical wards like ICU and maternity, they often place the Legionella shower filters because in hospitals they have tank of water. And whenever you have a tank of water, you can get microorganisms in the water. So hospitals are huge places and they, they pump water from one tank and then in this tank. So they've got a lot of tanks and they often have Legionella outbreak, which causes Legionnaire's disease, which is a waterborne disease. So, so yeah. Sounds like that, a cool disease though, like Legionnaire, did you say? Yeah, it's not, not a pleasant disease. I'm um, just kidding. But the name is kind of cool. So yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where the name came from, but maybe it was to do with the military legionnaires. You know, the legions. Oh yeah, 
yeah. foreign legions might have contracted this. Yeah, the French ones. Yeah, maybe because they're drinking water. I mean, in the military, always like since the dawn of time, when the when the invading army is coming, the retreating army will poison the water. Always. So you have this uh, thing anyway. But yeah, I think generally shower filters are ignored thing. People do focus more on the drinking water filters, whereas do, there are people that argue this is more important that you shower uh, and bathe in the water that's more pure than is otherwise. So we do both. We do shower filters. We do point of entry filtration. We do filtration for tanks. And we do point of use filtration in your kitchen for drinking water. So all of them are necessary because um, there is not one single thing you can put in your house to solve all your water problems. You need a shower filter, you need a whole house filter, you might need a softener, you might need ultraviolet system, you might need a reverse osmosis for drinking water. So Yeah, that sounds very interesting. My first introduction to that thought that you just laid out is that when I was swimming um, as a hobby, you know, I was going to the public uh, swimming arena or however you call it, the swimming pool and during the winter they were warming the the pool and the pool wasn't like uh, ozone uh, water pool or something it was like pure uh, public swimming pool with uh, the cheapest of materials uh, including of course i think chlorine or i don't know chlorine what is it chlorine you know the, that's the weird smell the weird chemical smell in the water in the swimming pool swimming pools mm. uh and that is actually my first introduction to smelling the when the water gets you know uh, airborne might also cause a problem besides drinking uh, water that was my first thought no i've been doing water treatment since 2009 so for many years now and i've had many examples of now you might not know this but the british olympic swimming team around 80% of them are diagnosed asthmatic. No way. Yep, diagnosed asthmatic, Olympic swimming team. British Truly. Olympic. Why? Because they spend five hours in the pool with chlorine. Not just them. Oh, yeah. but I've met, oh, not hundreds, but maybe 20 or so people who worked in the leisure center or they worked in the swimming pool, like a lifeguard or even in the office, you can still smell. And these people have asthma, and it's, it's asthma caused by prolonged exposure to chlorine smell. So you get swimmers, like these professional swimmers, and you see them pop out the pool, and they're like, <gasps> like this, having an asthma attack. And this asthma attack is, it's like the, the pipes inside are squeezed, and they like, <gasps> for breath, like this. So they have like inhalers with anti-inflammatories and steroids and this kind of thing as a treatment. So there's been enough decades of using chlorine in a swimming pool to prove that there is this long-term systemic effect from exposure. So if you're a professional swimmer or you swim every day, this kind of thing, you're in that group of people likely to develop an asthma after you know a long time. But we get the same kind of chlorine in our water from the water company in a much smaller dosage normally than swimming pool but still again this smaller exposure over a longer period of time would more than likely cause the same effect so you get a lot of older people who get breathless in the shower they they have a shower and they and then they, they can't breathe well, it's because of chlorine gas the shower becomes like a gas chamber and then when we put shower filters on the shower, this situation is reversed. So then they don't experience the breathless effect. So it's doing a good job. Now, I know this because people tell me because they had this problem and then I'm suggesting this solution and then they say this is solving the problem. So, but still, if people are damaged and they have asthma and their lungs and this kind of thing, then they can, uh, one of the therapies that, they can look at is hydrogen gas breathing, which I know you've made videos about with George Wiseman about breathing Brown's gas or hydroxy, which is mainly hydrogen gas. This has been shown in our own studies with universities to have really good effect on certain types of asthma. Not all asthma, but specifically the swimmer's asthma. Yes, this is good. 
one of the universities induced asthma attacks in the laboratory by getting people to breathe the very dry air. So when they breathe the dry air, they get <gasps> asthma attack. And this is a different kind of asthma attack where hydrogen didn't show it helped them much in, in acutely. But the hydrogen has helped really acutely the people who are asthmatic because of the chlorine. So yeah, I know for a fact that yeah, chlorine does cause this problem a health problem it's not the best chemical that water companies could use to treat the water they could use ozone or they could use other 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 oxidizing chemicals the problem with chlorine is that it creates toxic byproducts which are carcinogenic and damaging you know biologically damaging before chlorine was used in swimming pools they were making bombs with chlorine and chlorine gas is very volatile and explosive and you know, anyway, so it's, it's not, it's not what, um, I, I would avoid a swimming pool that has chlorine and I'd look for swimming pools that use salt and UV, this kind of thing. Why do not many swimming pools do this anymore? Because it's more expensive and it's more difficult to then just to have a chlorinating dosing system for your swimming pool. You understand? So that's why they don't do it because it's cheaper, easier to do the other thing, you know, public swimming pool kind of thing. So yeah. It's definitely important unless you are a swimmer five hours a day this kind of thing really fit strong athletic olympians you know 80 <laughs> percent is, is asthmatic so how to do this well go natural swimming swim in the sea swim in the lakes find a salt, salt treated swimming pool if you have a swimming pool think about changing it to salt and uv and just um, have something more and um, people waking up to this information. So they're looking for this kind of place now. But they many people have no idea that, about that. Uh, so it's good that you're raising the question about this. Mm. Yeah, uh, interesting information, Mark. And honestly, yeah, to, to anyone listening, I actually myself, I was like, since I was I was swimming when I was like 18 until I was like 23. So just for fun. Um, because I like it, you know, it, it, it actually, it's, it's a great activity, but, but unless you have like a sea, unless you are, uh, your home is nearby or your town, I would say your city is uh, nearby, like some clean sea water, um, or you have the, uh, you can afford a better swimming pool. Like I did in my last like year, I actually went to, to a Nozon one which is uh, nearby and yeah it was a little bit more expensive like uh, 100 euros every you know per year more expensive which to, at the end of the day it was much better to be honest uh in every way shape or form because uh, you know maybe that's not very nice to say but when you pay more you get better quality and there are less people also less crowded and you don't get the chlorine or whatever that was so I really enjoyed, and I, you know, anytime I like have a friend that he wants to go swimming and start the activity, I always propose that one. And now that uh, we are talking about that, I'm going to share them your our interview so that I protect more of my friends even better. But uh, let's get back to the showers, uh, Mark. First of all, if I do a cold shower or a cold bath. And the water isn't steaming, like, you know, isn't transformed into steam. Can I avoid the chlorine thing? So if I do like only cold showers, is that even possible in your opinion? There would be less chlorine in the shower cubicle, of course, because the heat causes the chlorine to escape. So chlorine has a half-life in water. It will escape anyway if you do not disturb this water. So if you have chlorinated water in a tank, with an open lid, it has a half-life and within so many days, that's it, it's gone, you know. So, uh, yeah, if you do cold showers, that that's good. Uh, good for your nervous system. <laughs> yeah, you would get less maybe uh, exposure. Also, when your skin is warm, that's when your skin can absorb more than if it's cold and dry, you know. So if it's moist and warm your skin will absorb more than otherwise but yeah i do use a sauna in my house maybe three to five times a week i'm in the sauna 
So uh, after sweating in the sauna, I'm going in a cold shower. <laughs> so it feels amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you feel like it's it's great. I highly recommend to everyone use a sauna and get in cold shower afterwards. So the whole process is really healing. Oh, yeah. I agree yeah. to that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you, you are like really stimulating. When you get this hot, your body feels like it's being attacked. So it creates these proteins. And these proteins are really good for your blood circulation and your heart's rhythm and everything like this. So they show that it's... Heat soak proteins, heat soak uh, something. Heat Is shock. that the name? Yes. Heat yeah, soak. that's it. So they, these proteins are manufactured once your body is in a stress state, in the heat, in a sauna, and they're, they're not manufactured like they are if you're not doing this kind of activity. That's why it's really important in, well, I suppose in England, where there's, you know, normal season, spring, summer, autumn, winter, and people get sick in the winter when there's no sun and they're staying inside. And sauna is great for that because they're getting the if especially if they have the red light in the sauna so yeah we can grow plants in the infrared uh, you mean uh, in the infrared sauna right yeah uh, near and far infrared light is is good for us uh, like like it's good for plants if we're growing plants in my cupboard then they can grow with blue and red light on, alone so this light is important for us as well. So I, I went to Egypt uh, for holiday for two weeks and I met some pharmacists and doctors there and I showed them our Parkinson's research. And they were all saying to me, no one with Parkinson's in Egypt. Parkinson's disease. There's like, oh, some old people get this kind of tremors shaking like this near to death, like very old. But we don't have, they don't have people in their 40s with Parkinson's in Egypt. I don't know about Greece, whether it's a big thing, but I know like, you know, people who don't get the sun in the midday on the skin are not creating what people are, uh, people who are doing this, you see. So yeah. it creates diseases. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've lived in Germany and, and you know, it's not easy, of course, to say, I, I to, to be outside in the middle of the day. And it's not always sunny, you know, England and Germany. So I get it when people complain to me because, you know, in, I'm in the sun for the past four years, every single day, almost. Yeah. Many days, like one hour at least. And it's enjoyable. It's not just, you know, sometimes people are too, how can I say, in the modern times, and that's what bugs me, honestly. We are too focused on the scientific evidence. But sometimes we need to, exp to explain to people, I think, the benefits of how it feels. Because feelings get a bad rep in our days, I think, Mark. I don't know about what you think, but, you know, many people go and say, hi, hey, logic over feelings or facts over feelings you know it's and i don't like this because i didn't know all these facts i know plenty of now but i didn't know when i started five years ago to go outside and literally every day take off my shirt and just lie there do exercise stretching you know whatever i did it because and i did it because i, I was curious but then i stick with it because it actually felt very 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 good and that's that's part of the science. Sometimes they ask people in Greece, hi, because, you know, Greeks used to be uh, centenarians, especially the Southerns, you know, the Cretans and the, the Islanders and the Peloponnesians, you know, those that have more sun and closer to, to the sea. And it wasn't just, you know, scientists try to to explain everything, you know, okay, how much meat did they eat? How much vegetables did they eat? Did they eat like olive oil? Was it extra virgin? <laughs> and to a Greek, that's nonsense. Because you can find centenarians in Greece that ate dairy all, all day long. My grandfather, for once, he's 96. And my grandmother, 91. And trust me, they ate a lot of meat and dairy. And But there are people in my from the, my other kin don't eat, eat meat very much, very, you know, too much. They eat like once every week or so. But they were centenarians, and I will get back to our conversation shortly, but they were because they ate together, because they ate slowly. 
because they grew their own food, regardless of the food type of the food category. So sometimes you just have to relax and just be a human being. And everything will take its place, you know, <laughs> take its uh, <laughs> course. You know? I, would say, uh, I would say it is scientific, though, because we modern science understands what thoughts are made of. And modern science understands that thinking and thoughts create chemicals. Uh, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, thousands more. Thoughts create chemicals and hormones, proteins, and it's all like, so the brain, thinking pattern, depression, anxiety, these kind of things are creating anger as well. You know how many men with prostate cancer that I met, hundreds of men with prostate cancer I've met. There's one common thing with them, anger and resentment. So when they ask me, oh, what should I do about my prostate cancer? And I might talk about deuterium depletion. I might talk about Brown's gas and hydroxy. I might talk about other things. They might ask me, what else can I do? And I say, well, the root cause of the problem is anger and resentment. And every time I say that, they're like, wow, yeah, it's because of this. I've been so angry about this for years. And I felt that this is so unfair that I, this happened to me and blah, blah, blah. So they will they will express actually after that when you when you recognize that problem. So yeah, you're a hundred percent correct. Uh, but I would say this has become scientific now. It's not just hippie stuff, you know, <laughs> or, or natural health stuff. It's scientific what the thoughts are creating in the body and the diseases that result in the body when the supercomputer is programming this body to do what it's thinking yeah that's 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 a very good statement it actually adds to my statement too um because what you say is true and I, i've i've observed you know myself you know uh not to be honest completely honest transparent as i'm talking to you right now i'm not in my best of uh health status i was ever I'm in, in in a low point, and I'm trying. I'm getting slowly out of it. So, I'm not presenting myself as a super expert that has figured everything out. But I, one thing I've observed with 100% accuracy is that I myself hold you know a lot of resentment about a few people in my life and lots of anger. And I think people should resolve these things along with their diets. I think, you know, there has to be some balance, like, you know, like the ancient Greeks did, you know, relax or the Romans or the ancient peoples in general, you know. And I think practices like practices when you go outside in nature, usually myself, at least, uh, they balance me. They ease my anger. Uh, but when I do things around people, my anger and my resentment, they don't get resolved easily. No matter how much psychotherapy, I'm not using psychotherapy, but just as an example, um, I've seen from people I know and others that uh, psychotherapy, if you don't have like nature activities, if you don't have something that brings you back to your core, your mother nature, hiking, mountaineering, swimming outside, sea swimming, training at the park, whatever, uh, rock climbing, I don't know, something outside find a park you know find a forest if you don't have these activities and you are all always around people it's hard to break the cycle that's what i'm saying so for people interested that's my theory based on observation i'm not a scientist i'm relatively smart but not super smart but I observe a lot and that's what i'm seeing and from my own whenever i don't get that therapy mark it's easy for the brain to go back to produce this anger, resentment, proteins, or whatever it does, these feelings. And then, of course, guess what? My stomach gets again weird. My gut feels bad. And everything, you know, is goes down to the toilet. I mean, no pun intended. Um, so, yeah, great points. That's what Well, one, one thing you said about you hold anger holding it's like you possess it it's inside you so say going back to the guys with prostate cancer many of them will say well i never get angry 
I never get angry. They're very chilled, you know, and often people can walk all over them and they never get angry, but they should. <laughs> okay. So part of the reason holding anger is not getting fucking angry when you should. You should be angry. Someone pissed you off. If you don't get angry, then you hold the anger. Be angry. You should be angry. You have a right to. It's a natural feeling. So if you don't express the anger, you hold it. If you don't cry, you don't. You hold it. You see what I mean? So you are still holding this energy, and the energy for anger is down here. If you look at the chakras, you've got your you've got a root chakra here. You've got the dantian here. You've got the heart chakra here. Throat chakra here. And the low consciousness is down here, down the root is the low consciousness, right? So anger, holding anger and resentment is low consciousness. So how do you, how do you rise? How do you express it? Well, express anger. It's natural. It's fine. I know that we 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 made a and my my fault. We made a parenthesis that is taking over the main subject. Uh, actually, the main subject became a parenthesis. So sours became parenthesis to our chat. But before we go back to the sours, what I wanted to ask you is, in your opinion, that's a personal question probably, how would you express anger in a healthy way without destroying the surroundings and your people around you? So people have different uh opinions about that but i want uh, your opinion about this how do you do that well first of all i will express anger without worrying about the feeling of other people so i don't want to hold anger but if a genuine thing should make you angry but anger is a natural response to like getting ready to fight isn't it maybe <laughs> so you know everything is energy exchange between people and sometimes it's it's healthy to express the anger but you say you can express anger in a healthy way so you can say i feel really angry because i have a need for respect and that's not being met so i wouldn't say i feel really angry because you disrespect me i would never say that i'd say i'm i'm feeling angry because i've got a need for respect it's not being met so i'm angry now Rah! <laughs> so be angry. Oh, it's fine. It's that's, fine. That's... It's culturally not acceptable to be angry. Yeah. It's okay. Be angry. It's fine. Because when you hold the anger, it's a problem. Yeah, I, I, it's certainly a problem. That's why I'm asked because it's that's I myself I have a lot of anger and I see that for example my god is destroyed and I think not only I think but I've observed whenever I manage to actually get in the flow of. Uh, not joy, not I wouldn't say happiness, but you know, joy, like uh, super positive emotions, things happen, and I'm already, I'm outside, suns uh, is beautiful. I mean, not everything, but many of my health issues get, not, I don't want to say resolved 100%, but I would say it got eased a lot to the point of like, I'm like, comfortable. I'm like, oh, that feels nice, and it is a success role. But then I get back to my old habits and I um, get um, around situations, uh, occasions and people that I am I hold resentment against or with. And I'm uh, trying to balance things. I see that for with leaders. I don't know if you if, if you if you talk with uh, leaders of people and stuff. Uh, and when I say leaders, I don't mean like YouTuber leaders, leaders with uh, quotes, air quotes here. Uh, I mean, real people with teams like deal with people every day and usually when you are in the managerial position and you want to do it right you hold your tongue and that's why i asked you because i i am and i was in these positions and i not have to do but kind of see that you know if i let go you know i give a bad a bad example so that's why i asked how do you do that especially when you are at work it helps if you can't be fired <laughs> but if it is then maybe you're in a toxic job with a toxic manager you know i don't know but look express your anger but express it in a non-violent way so don't hold the anger say i tell the person i'm angry because i have a need of xyz that's not happening and then that person can hear your 
need and feelings. And once someone hears your needs and feelings, then you've got half a chance to solve the problem. But all I tell you this, anyone I know that has an anger resentment problem has problems in the bottom half, the prostate, the gallbladder, the gut. It's, it's down here the energy is there. This is the chakra that holds this energy, this thought energy. And if you carry on like this, then you end up with chronic issues here. Yeah. And so it's really healthy to express your anger. But again, some people are just dicks, aren't they? So like in my own experience, I will avoid these people in my circle. So I, I don't, you know, and that includes family members, siblings, parents. Oh, now you touched, uh, you touched uh, a very sensitive no, subject. The bigger, the bigger, the big thing can be parents and siblings. Okay, it's because you're a child of your parents, you always wanted from anything their love and everything like that. So yes, if your mom or your dad keeps winding you up and making you angry, then this is not healthy. And there's no, uh, there's no reason why you're not obliged to do anything. You're, you're obliged to look after number one first, and then you can do something for number two and three and four afterwards, you know, but number one is that you will damage yourself holding to anger, biting your tongue. But people are scared to tell someone that, that they're angry, you see, when they should have a formula, which is nonviolent. So, I feel angry because I have a need for something. It's not being met. So the other, the other person, if you're talking to your dad, for example, and your dad keeps insulting you or putting you down or something like that, and it's making you angry, you never say anything. But if you do say it, you say, dad, I'm feeling angry because I have a need for love or I have a need for respect or I have a need for something else. And it's not being met. So if we could if we could work together to think of a way to make this met, that would be great for me, please. And normally, nine times out of ten, you throw something out there, you throw a problem on the table, or you ask a question, people want to answer the question. People want to solve the problem, don't they? But they'll never solve they'll never want to solve the problem if you attack that person with anger. So exactly. you never say you never say the word you when you're angry, okay? <laughs> never say the word you, you. You made me angry. What's going to happen? Defensive reaction, even aggressive reaction back. So you are not solving the problem. I deal with angry customer on the phone. How to deal with an angry customer on the phone. Okay. We have a water filter. It just exploded or something bad happened or it's our fault. You know, the leak <laughs> flooded my kitchen and now I'm, and now I can't sleep worrying about the leak and the, the, and they're angry and they might express themselves in an angry, uh, violent way. You're completely useless and this and this is insulting. And this is it. Now that's a key. That's key training, how to not become angry <laughs> because angry is hearing an insult and attack. And it's a defense mechanism to fight back. Whereas, uh, if you don't hear an attack, then you're not going to get angry. I hear, I hear the frustration and anger of, a, of someone whose needs are not being met. So you say like this, now you can say you, right? You say, are you feeling angry because you've got a need for this filter system to not leak and it is leaking and, and yeah. And they go, yeah. Suddenly the adrenaline goes down, the chemicals in their bodies change. And now just because you empathize and you said, are you? this because you that and they say yeah or they say no it's because of this oh right okay that then still the same thing it's empathy isn't it the adrenaline goes and suddenly the anger's left the conversation and now i can say i can move into tactical mode and say will this solve your problem so if we if we send an engineer and change the system and install a pressure regulator so it won't explode again with your high pressure, you know, but that solve your problem. Yeah. Okay. Finished. Then, you know, quite often that person who rang angry ends up becoming your best friend because they had a good energy exchange. You see, that's 
why i didn't hear the anger i didn't hear an insult i let it flow past me because i i feel an angry person that his need is not being met so once the need once you empathize that gets rid of half the problem once you solve the problem the problem's finished that's it but yeah it's it's healthy to express your anger and if you uh can't avoid these situations with people making you angry or or causing a feeling or they did something less to your liking and then you become angry or sad or whatever it is then you uh it's up to you to say to that person i'm feeling something because i have a need for something it's not being met and on the opposite side if an angry person comes to you you say well are you angry because you have a need for a clean house and it's not being met and i've just made a mess everywhere yes okay well if i clean it up now would that would that solve the problem yeah okay done that's it so it's a feeling and needs based language that people need to learn to of to deal with anger situations and to express the energy because now i'm talking about the problem the energy is leaving i'm not holding it now i'm giving it i'm sharing it and together we solve the problem and this can really heal relationships uh, resentments and things like that it's the most important thing mental health and this is a formula that people use to express the anger if people don't get angry they hold their energy if people run away from it without rolling again they're holding it in a different way anyway you can make many videos out of this conversation so, <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to talk about something else we can yeah yeah it's funny sometimes you know the stream of uh, consciousness takes us to different paths than we expected to when we started and i i'm I, i'm actually fascinated by it because i i was so interested by what you say um it was so interesting actually yeah with uh, we, sometime some, sometime maybe in the future uh, we can actually expand uh, about all these uh, subjects because uh, I've seen them work, man. It's it's really some. Yeah, that's why I talked about uh, couple, like couple, not couple, but twenty minutes ago probably about the Greeks and the centenarians. It was exactly that. That was my point in in a sense because when Greeks ate, usually they did it with family, friends, ha ha ha, hoo, 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 people anger, and that's why that's how we make fun from uh, of. Uh, of Germans, you know, of other peoples when they come here, they're like, you know, too much in their own space, you know. And we're like, hey, come on, hey. and then we shout, and you know, hey, and we, we are, and people in Greece express uh, complaint very fast, like it never stays in. Like you, you will hear it. Like when, <laughs> when something happens, you will hear it. There is no like, uh, you know, I mean, I love the British, but sometimes, you know, we have the we have here in Greece and other countries, southern ones, we have the uh, perception of you guys like uh, gentlemen, you know, it's, please, come on. Uh, and that's fine. That's beautiful. That's actually art, in my opinion. The way that Br you Brits talk, it's, uh, I kind of love it. In my opinion, it's uh, super structured and beautiful. But, uh, you know, we don't have this in Greece. Uh, Greeks actually dancing like all the time ah, and meeting strangers out in the street it's very normal like it's super normal it's actually the norm to not talk to strangers is actually weird mm. so now it's getting the opposite of course because hey social media tiktok another yeah. conversation one thing i would say is like in all the blue zones around the world they call them blue zones with the highest number of centarians yeah Eating together as a family, uh, this family bond thing, you know, this non-violent, happy community family kind of feel is a strong need. It's one of the strongest needs in the hierarchy of needs, up there with love, up there with food and shelter and clothes and, and feeling part of uh, being connected with other people, exchanging the energy in a really beautiful way, breaking bread with them and this is health and this all the, the blue zones is one of the feature the high altitude is another feature of blue zones this is probably to do with deuterium opposite of hydrogen low deuterium in the air low deuterium in the water just just uh, healthier altitude 
Uh, again, natural farming. Uh, often you see less meat eating, very little meat eating in the really in the proper blue zones. They're mostly vegan. Yeah. Um, yeah, or, uh, or pescatarian, I would add. I would, uh, I would say some 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 communities kind of pescatarian, but uh, yeah, they certainly have greens. Most, uh, you know, most yeah, yeah. I've meat. been to some. I visited some of these places and met 120 year olds smoking 30 cigarettes every day. So they don't think that cigarettes kill you. So they That's don't. Crazy. <laughs> they don't. They're not the horrible Chinese ones that I tried. <laughs> They're worse than Mulberry Red. <laughs> you know, there was a comedian that I've read, an American one. He reads like a hundred, one hundred or something, other two. And he was drinking alcohol and smoking cigars every single day in his other uh, uh, Alcohol is also mentioned in the Blue Zone analysis where these populations, they don't drink alcohol. They don't. So in blue zones where they have 120 year olds, they, these people don't drink. They smoke, but they don't drink. So alcohol is yeah. alcohol is is um, highly destructive to the body. It's, it's bacteria killing, and it's uh, it it is not no. good for your gut health. So anyone with gut health problems or anyone wants to live over 100, you just finish alcohol completely. Yeah, and yeah, myself, I'm you know I'm. Uh... Uh, I'm again, not against, but you know, I'm I'm not drinking alcohol. Like last time I drank alcohol was like when I was 22, 23. Um, so I'm not in a position to actually preach because it was easy for me to cut it out of my, my life. Uh, that's why I never talk about it in the channel because I don't think I have much to offer. You know, it's it was so easy for me to cut. It was like, eh, I don't like it anyway, so cut it. But I know people in my life that are addicted, like... I have a cousin. Hey, cousin, if you, if you listen to this, I don't know if he cut it now, but you know, I, I know people that are like, oh, I need my beer, you know, I need my vodka, like, and I can't get, I can't understand it. That's why I, I can't talk about it. But mm -hmm. I don't know, if, of course, about the blue zones. I might add an asterisk uh, with caution because I've done my research like a few years back, but I don't know, I, I didn't dive too deeply into it. But I know from, because, you know, I've known from here, from talking with people and blah, blah. Sometimes in Greece, what people do, I don't know, it's like probably like in England, you have the, how do you, how do you say, like pint, pont, pint? Pint of beer, yeah. Yeah, after dinner, yeah, you drink something. Um, I, do. I don't, but but there's a big pub pub culture in England. So, oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So I know. I know. Up and drink and, and it's... Acceptable, yeah, um, it's design. bad. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, every I, I, Greek, don't, I don't. You don't. You don't do that. Yeah, every Greek uh, friend of mine that went to to study uh, in England, in, in the UK in general, they were always complaining about people drinking before drinking. Like mm -hmm. the youngsters, they they were pre-drinking alcohol before they went out to drink, and. It's like it was. <laughs> That's to get drunk shocking. before you get to the pub, so you don't spend. <laughs> money the pub. That's why. <laughs> I mean, it's la I mean, we laugh, but it's it's kind of sad. It's. Uh, I hope it changes anyway. In yeah. Serbia, um, people, many people make their own rakia, like uh, kind of like uzo. But it's like uh, oh, raki. We have raki in Greece. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's the same. Yes, it's like the same, but they make it from like. Uh, 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 plums or from uh, pears or from dunya, you know, quince. <laughs> uh, but they add some sugar and then they ferment and then they distill. And it's nice. It's really clean, nice. But then you, people should investigate why there is called beers, wines and spirits. Why is it called spirits? Because in chemistry, you use the alcohol, like ethanol, to extract things through extraction you know so on a chemistry basis this spirit actually extracts like the essence from you and i think it does the same to people as well it destroys their lives it destroys their liver it destroys their relationships it makes them act like a complete idiot like and it makes them do things they regret and it, it's almost like they're taken over by spirit by by an entity controlling them 
So it's a chemical thing and it's a spiritual thing. And that's why spirits are called spirits. And fermented things like beer and wine and things like that is different. It's not spirit. So maybe if you do drink alcohol, it's better to drink wine or beer than it is to drink spirits, you see. But I think the whole thing is rubbish anyway. Uh, water, I'm water guy, so <laughs> every day is water. Yeah, so I like water. We, myself here too. So probably we're going to meet sometime in England. We are going to go in a, in a pub and order our diphtherium depleted water <laughs> or we are going to bring yours i'll be really shocked but yeah that would be really fun <laughs> to actually uh film it also uh and see the reactions you know <laughs> but just again my um, point about the blue zones and deuterium is that there is one of the things that you can say is really different about the environment is deuterium and so could this explain why people live longer I think so, because I did myself deuterium depletion for six months, only drinking deuterium depleted water, and it completely changed my body, completely changed my metabolism. And it's like one of the biggest health hacks I've done in my life was deuterium depletion. And whatever my deuterium level was at the start, after six months, it was far lower because every day I'm drinking one and a half liters of deuterium depleted water and that mm. changed my body completely completely i even lost 25 kilos doing no exercise i mean i sit i sit a lot in the daytime at a laptop and you know at the time yeah not moving not moving to enough you know this kind of work habit and so i decided to do a deuterium depletion to drink this water for six months to see what happens you know and after two months, I really noticed something. But before two months, nothing. It was just like drinking water. I wasn't really conscious of what was happening. Like, mm. But the effect was gradual and over this time period. And uh, it made me feel like I was 20 again, like energy-wise and metabolic. Wow. That's, that's a cliffhanger for the next episode, Mark. You know that. We have to go there. I'm kind of like intrigued now. Look, you have to do you have to research a little bit and look at deuterium depletion and look at what it does and why do people with cancer use this water and find something about it because there's a lot of content on yeah. youtube about deuterium depletion and i've got something to add about this as well like because i've been dealing with this water for some time i spent six months drinking myself and I'm dealing with hundreds of people who are doing this deuterium depletion. Okay. So when it comes to put it this way, right? If I could choose two things, only pick one of them. Someone offered me a Brown's gas machine and said, you can only have this. Or someone offered me however much I want of deuterium depleted water. I would always take the deuterium depleted water, despite the fact I've seen this Brown's gas do amazing things for people. The reason why is because we make hydrogen right in the body and we also make deuterium as well but we mainly in, uh, ingest the deuterium from the water the air and the food so if you can keep knocking this deuterium out your body you're going to keep the body in a much better state and it's just something that needs people to look at this kind of thing and anyone over the age of 40 say should look at a deuterium depletion even if they have no health problems, just for longevity, I think. Yeah, it's a really important point. And I, I can only say this because I, I, I can read literature and go, that looks interesting. But for me, I didn't really understand it until I've done it myself. And now I know the effect and it's real. So yeah, it did have a big effect on me. Please do a video on deuterium depletion because it's, it's, it's it goes oh, with the whole longevity question about blue zones, about their habitat their environment what they do with family what they eat what they smoke what they drink and where they live is all high altitude and it's all low deuterium yeah, yeah. so i'm like four meters above sea level here so <laughs> uh, i do want to like move to high altitude twenty thousand meters above sea level that's my oh. so i'm planning uh... to move to somewhere in high altitude maybe pyrenees maybe portugal Oh, Somewhere. is Portugal high altitude? 
well, they have not really, but they have like some farms which two thousand meters above sea level. Ah, Kenya, places like that. They've got nice high altitude places. Wudang Mountain in China, probably the most amazing place I've been to. Where I've seen the、oh. most. I mean, this place is just unbelievable, and everything we talked about is there. Or the the family thing, the the Taoist diet, the no alcohol. It's great, you know. This is a brilliant place, and you see many, many, many very old people, very old people there, and they're great. They're doing tai chi. <laughs> they're moving like, you know, a fifty-year-old in England would move. You see. So anyway, there's a lot to learn from these blue zones. There's so much we can learn from blue zones that it's really important. But it's very much to do with water, hydrogen, deuterium, and lifestyle, thought process, family. And some other things, you know, natural living, natural products, not overconsumption, brain programming, you know, like the Chinese cigarettes will not say this this cigarette is going to kill you <laughs> on the packet. <laughs> so like, people don't think that. <laughs> so, and they're not manufactured. If you, read, if you read, if you read a label on your cigarettes every day, and it says this is going to kill it's you, disgusting. Yeah, it's actually it's it's the message on the cigarette that will kill you. <laughs> yeah, I you know what, my mother smokes, and I observed that like two years ago. I was like, you know, hey, I mean, I know that she's not going to quit it. So I'm like, I literally, I'm like, do you like these messages? Like I'm asking here, like. Do you like to open your packets every day and like see some deformed dude,、uh, and then a message? You know, you are going to get like, ah、uh, ah、uh, ah,、uh. and it's like, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I don't care, you know. And I'm like, well, I do care. So, and, and I took his, I took her cigarette packets and I threw it. I I took I I kept the cigarettes and I put them in the. In a small、um, jar, like a glass jar, and I'm like,、um, okay, take this and、uh, just don't put it under the sun, and we're fine for now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she keeps doing it, but I think that was a great point. You know, the message is horrendous, and I think it's part of the problem, not the, of the solution.、Uh. Yeah, so that message creates an anxiety, which creates a chemical, which creates a chemical, which creates a protein, which creates a hormone, and then before you know it, yeah. You have this, so this is、uh, this is your fears manifesting,、uh, and if your fears are stronger than your manifestation that you want, then the fears will become the manifestation. So yeah, it's good that she's not worried about it, and the best thing is to never worry about it. Just smoke is fine. Yeah, that's my plan. I'm glad. I'm so glad that you say so. I'm so glad because I thought that was kind of weird. Like, is it? I, I, I kind of second thought. I, I second guessed myself. Like,、uh, was it that the right approach?、Uh, but thanks, thanks.、Um, all right, Mark.、Um, I think we can go on for like five more hours. And honestly, I would enjoy every last minute of it. Every minute of it. But、um, let people know.、Uh, maybe we can do some part two in the future.、Um, let people know where they can find you. And of course.、Uh, Please let us know if anybody is interested into putting some sour filters. How much would that cost from your websites, from your products? How much for a complete solution for a bath, for example?、Um, with a bath, like say, say in my own house, I've got、um, triple filter and a softener at the entry point. I have、uh, vitamin C shower filters in the shower. And I have reverse osmosis in the kitchen, and I've got a hydrogen bottle, and I've got an Osmio Infinity Browns gas machine by my bed, and that's what I have. So, the water coming into my property—if I—if I bought all of this retail from Osmio, I would probably spend about a thousand pounds, and that's for the gold package. Like, there's nothing better I can add to my system to improve it. So, a normal average house with one bathroom, this kind of thing, my my house. If someone spent a thousand pounds, a thousand euros, whatever this kind of amount, they should be able to get everything: shower filters, reverse osmosis, hydrogen bottle, filters for the entry, and some of them are installed as well. So、uh, this is the kind of investment. But if someone's just buying a shower filter, well, they're less than forty euros, and they cost maybe less than that per year to maintain and change filters. So. 
it's a really easy way to someone to start to improve their con contact point in the shower. And you can fill the bath with the shower. If you have a hose on your shower in the bath, you can just fill the bath with the shower. Some people are, are doing that as well to filter the bath. Maybe they are renting um, property and they cannot install something, this kind of situation. So shower filters really cheap and really easy. Just be careful. There's many fake ones out there. And if anyone wants to contact uh, uh, me or, or Osmio Water, it's osmiowater.co.uk, osmiowater.com in America. And yeah, we are here to help people with the water problem, but also with the health problems. Because we are 62% hydrogen, we are molecularly more than 99% water. So water is a big part of the body and our health problem. Chronic dehydration, lack of hydrogen, gas, uh, many things are causing these things. So yeah, water is really important. Like hydrogen water is great. Brown's gas is great. Day-to-day -day drinking and cooking with pure water is great. And don't believe all the bullshit on the internet. Okay, you can go on the internet and read and and be convinced that pure water is bad for you. Pure water has no minerals. And it's going to strip your body of these minerals. Excuse me. Look at George Wiseman. He's been drinking distilled water for more than twenty years. Does he look mineral deficient? Am I mineral deficient? I've been drinking since two thousand seven. Ro demineralized water. Am I mineral deficient? No. Not at all. No health problems. I have friends who are my age, 40, 43 to 45 years old. They have health problems. Big ones. I've been drinking pure water for a long time. I have no problem. I'm not saying it's because of that. I'm just saying that, you know, demineralized water falls from the sky. And the nature loves that. Right? So there's, there's a gender uh, against people drinking pure water. Why? Because... Our government is adding a chemical to treat your teeth. So if you were going to go sun, if you were going to the beach and it was a really sunny day, would you drink the suntan lotion? Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. It's the same. It's the same dialogic, you know. So any technology that removes this chemical, which is difficult to remove, fluoride, reverse osmosis, distillation. Apparently, these are going to kill you. It's a load of bullshit. Okay. And it's still on the internet. World Health Organization bullshit about reverse osmosis. Not good. It's bullshit. And the sad thing is it really convinces some people. So even every day, Osmio gets an inquiry from someone going, I was thinking about getting reverse osmosis or something, but I'm worried about the lack of minerals in the water. So... This is them reading stuff on the internet, you know, that is, that is fake. Yeah. I was studying civil engineering, one thing, and I let, and I let us be. And I chose, and I think uh, God helped me chose, I chose to deal with water in my school. I specifically chose water technology. That was my, um, how do you say, my, uh, you take, you know, you take some, specific uh, thing you are not like a civil engineer you are okay i build bridges i build roads or i deal with water situations underground overground and i remember i was fascinated with it it actually was the first time that school felt so light so fun and i was like oh shit and i was learning about underground water you know how to drill why uh, rain, water, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, yay. Um, then I dropped out of school, but uh, that's another mm -hmm. conversation. Um, you, should a, you should do a video about uh, water divining, divination. So divination is the practice of finding water underground to drill a borehole and this kind of thing, but also finding leaks, finding your car keys, anything that you need. And divination is the first book the first chapter of the Bible of Chinese medicine is the I Ching. The I Ching, you know, the um, chapter one, methods of divination. So if you don't know about divination, then you're missing something massive for the mind and the spirit. So health is...
body, mind, and spirit, right? It's not just your body. We just talked about how thoughts, the mind creates the effect on the body, but nothing about spirit. Uh, we talk apart from alcohol spirit, but spirit is all to do with divination, connecting your radio to the frequency of the big radio upstairs. That is what it is about. So people learn this spiritual practice through studying water underground and all the water companies and borehole drilling companies. Yes, they use diviners, not sophisticated scientific equipment. They use diviners and anyone can do this. Anyone can learn this. It's like flicking the switch on your computer. It's turning it on before the computer was off here somewhere in the brain right side of the brain it's not used until you do divination and when you do divination you can solve a lot of your life problems and when you solve a lot of your life problems you become happier and when you're happier you're healthier so it is a route to health to learn divination and it will really really change your life this is why again it's another thing that is kept quiet <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, deuterium depletion and water divining are two things that you should really look into, especially the water divining from what you told me, like that would be interesting. And we teach people how to find the water and the techniques and it's, a, it's, a, it's an art, it's not a science, it's an art. But if you're Russian, you can go to university and do a degree in the water divining which is a science degree. <laughs> so, so the Russians are very serious about the divining and the Germans, actually. It's important, interesting. it's interesting. And the Chinese have this strange Chinese way. In England, we have a strange English way. In Egypt, they have an egg in their hand. They're the Bedouins finding water in the desert. Uh, you know, they use an egg. <laughs> in England, we use rods. Some people, oh yeah, we do that too here. Yeah, and some people use a stick, some people use a pendulum, some people use nothing. So yeah, so it shows you that you can see without your eyes, you can hear without your ears. Your supercomputer here has got so much power, you're just using 1% of it. <laughs> Wasn't that an Einstein quote or something? Einstein right. was a well, Einstein learned divination. In fact, Einstein went away, became a diviner, and then came back with all his great stuff after divining, because divining is a channel that opens up information. It's like you get downloaded information. So that's what happens when people divine after some years of this practice, they start to download everything. And they will also start to develop intuitions like they know what's gonna happen in the future this kind of things. Uh, so it's a very powerful exercise and it creates someone to be quite powerful, but also they, they have to be humble uh, with it, you know, and they have to stick to water and don't get into this magic and this business. Because if you can find a water, you can find anything, including what you're thinking about. So this is a, it, it can, send people down the wrong path stay with water it's the gold standard it's the hardest thing to find and to do properly is the water so if you stick with water and you know just your car keys that's it look for these things find what you need and that practice will open up the channels that you uh you don't know about this yet <laughs> i can tell but when you when you do it's like wow this is this is mind-blowing fantastic and it will open your mind up to realities and natural laws that you would never dreamed existed before amazing yeah i'll send you something uh by yeah, email actually there's one video uh, one video i should send you about a woman in england he's got children completely blindfolded and they can catch the ball they can see everything i promise oh. you this legitimate my own children know this as well uh why children because they have the right brain open the left brain we, we adult world is all in the left brain yeah yeah too concerned 
to concern about stuff that doesn't ma really matter as much. The original divination in England came about when the royal family brought in the diviners from Germany to exploit the British uh, mining industry. This is in the 1600s, okay? So in the 1600s, the royal family brought in the diviners to exploit the mining industry, the coal, the oil, the gas. And why do you think Russia has so much? <laughs> because you can do a university degree there in the divining. Anyway. All right. Anyway, this is a this fantastic conversation for a next topic. But, uh, if oh, you, man, uh, yeah. yeah, if you get some rods, get some rods. I can teach you over video how to use them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that would be fun. That would be I have fun. a YouTube video on advanced techniques for water divining. If anyone's interested, how to measure with your rod. Uh, but yeah, these are these are water divining techniques. Uh, we run a training center here for the British Dowsing Society, the British Society of Dowsers, sorry. And we buried the pipes under the ground, uh, different different pl plastic pipe, drain pipe, electrical pipe, this, this, these pipes uh, and cables. And we have an assault course at our nature reserve. So people come here for training <laughs> and they have to find the pipes. How deep is it? What wow. is it made of? Wow. And, uh, we know the answer because we buried them. So. <laughs> okay. You, you, you are in, in, interested in water. Like... That's what I like about some people like you. And I, I had a feeling about you. I mean, you, you have an organized thing there with Osmio and, you know, and you are referred from Clive. So I kind of knew where I was, uh, what I was going to expect. People like yourself, Mark. And that's what, that's why I'm glad to, to be connected with people like you and actually try to sell your, yourselves and uh, your knowledge. Is that you are multidimensional? You never stop it. You're not. You're never happy with the surface answers. You are like, okay, let's you know, do, let's dive into the <laughs> ancient. You you went to China. You went to this. You did this. You, you now do courses. You know whatever. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's what I'm saying. All right. So at some point we're going to do some part two. I think. I think you have much more to cover, but let's first uh, end this one. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on, man. Um, I really appreciate it, your time and your energy. Your energy especially is very contagious, so Full of thumbs up. Every day. <laughs> okay, people, you listen. Listen. Uh, the man speaks the truth. Get your brown scans machine. Uh, so you have you have a brown scans machine in your store, right? So yeah, also yeah. finish. Vinti. Yeah, there's osmiawater.eu as well, which is for people in Europe to order without any taxes and things like that. So we're in, yeah, EU, UK base and America and just all now starting in East Africa, in Kenya. So we're now going globe. We're globalists, unfortunately, now. Kenya, because, <laughs> OK, you, you are a globalist, but you I guess next stop is Wudan, China, next door. Next, yeah. next topic, flat earth, then, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an, another conversation for, for another day and night. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, please stay yeah, for right. a couple of minutes offline after the recording ends. And everybody else, please uh, like this video if you liked it. Uh, it gives the good energy to the ether. And uh, go drink your uh, water. Do your sour filters. I mean, you, you, you listen to Mark. I mean, what else? Go go, go to his, to his uh, below. I have everything, profiles, everything. Like uh, also, uh, if you have any, uh, if anyone's got a question about water, about hydrogen, about deuterium, about anger, <laughs> whatever, please write a comment on the video because I will come and check it and reply to you. Many angry people now in the comments. Share <laughs> this video with anyone you know who has an anger problem. I myself, I'll be in the comment section. Okay. I, I'll start it. All right. Great. I'll, I'll be there with you. Okay. Well, thanks for inviting me on. I, I always like to get an invite to talk and thank you. So um, look forward to the next conversation. Yeah. And, um, and say hello to Clive. I'm sorry he's not on YouTube anymore. I hope you stay on YouTube. <laughs> I'll try my best. 
I, I'll play it as smart as possible. And I wanted to share the knowledge in, on Instagram and on other you know, younger platforms and see what happens. See if these 13-year-olds, instead of dancing without reason, maybe they try to find out more about diphtherium, depleted water. And that is my mission, Mark. I want well, you, have to, you have to put it in 20 seconds, otherwise that's it. No I'll do oh, <laughs> man. That's my plan, though. That's my plan. Great. Watch, watch me. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, see you soon, guys. Uh, like, uh, thank you, Mark, again. Yeah.